Okay, so YMAX it has sent me another display. This is the third display I think they've sent me, and uh, this one is very special. So this is a 12-inch display. Uh, it's super light, it's pretty thin, uh, and connectivity is good on it because it's got an HDMI socket and a couple of USB sockets. Uh, and before I plug anything else into it, uh, what I usually do with a USB-C display is to plug in a Samsung phone uh, just because it's straightforward to do. Uh, so if I plug it into uh, the, I think the bottom socket and then plug it into this phone, uh, you'll see what happens. So I've got nothing else plugged into this at the moment. So the phone is powering the display, which in itself I think is pretty impressive. So it's a very low energy display and uh, it switches into DeX, uh, which is a bit like a Chrome OS operating system that Samsung phones have, and some other Android phones do something similar to this, but it is a touchscreen display. And so now I have a 12-inch tablet, and uh, everything works on it absolutely fine. I've set it up that the sound, uh, you can change the settings in DeX so the sound comes through the display, so it's got its own speakers as well. So if I was to do a search for a video, uh, so leave PSP video 4K and start it playing and go into full screen and also full screen on the device. So if I just pick this up so I've got access to it. So you can see that it's lovely and sharp, uh, very, very crisp. The sound is actually pretty reasonable considering it is such a thin device. And I had this working with my phone for quite a while and it actually worked for quite some time. So let's pause that. I can add a wireless mouse and keyboard and uh, have access to the web and all the other features just like a desktop computer and works really well with mouse and keyboard uh, but also I can get rid of that and I can launch say something like GameCube uh, so we've run a GameCube emulator and the Hulk pop that full screen pick up the Xbox controller and we can play a bit of Hulk but what else can we plug into this so this is my M1 MacBook and I'm using the same USB-C cable to plug in the monitor. The monitor is being powered from the MacBook and you can see it's defaulted to mirroring as the setting. So basically whatever I do on the screen uh, shows on both. So this would be great in a work situation where I wanted someone to see what's on my monitor but we don't have to sit close side by side. So I can flip this monitor around here. They could be sat the other side of a table and they can still see what I'm doing. But I can also change that setting. So if I click on screen mirroring and use as a separate display, you see what happens. I can drag this Chrome window over to here, uh, and then I could stay, say start UTM, and uh, so on this screen, I could run Windows 11 if I wanted to, and I can pop that full screen, and we can log into Windows, but we can also go back to this screen, and we can do a search, say for Hot UK Deals, and use that as a separate monitor. And we have a very portable, dual monitor setup. So basically if I put this together, that's not a lot to carry around and it is also super light and maneuverable. This is GTA running from my iPhone and uh, what I'm using is the official HDMI adapter. Not powering the phone, but I could power the phone if I was worried about battery life. Uh, and then I've got an HDMI to mini HDMI adapter and I'm powering the screen separately with the USB-C. And it definitely makes the game a lot more playable on this bigger screen. I can use my iPhone with a power bank to power the display. And uh, if I want to watch something like Netflix, uh, as soon as I hit play, it switches to full screen and the sound comes out the monitor. Ah, Captain. It's definitely a more elegant solution with the Samsung. Uh, as you can see here, one cable powering the monitor, powering the phone. And uh, we can watch things like Amazon Prime in full screen and it looks pretty decent and sounds pretty decent as well. And here it is running from a Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, in this configuration I'm running it from the mains uh, so you can see it coming in here. I've then got an HDMI cable going into the monitor. The USB-C cable is going from the Pi which is powering the monitor but it's also supplying touchscreen support as well and uh, it's running from an SSD drive at the moment but if we tap on here you can see the touchscreen functionality is working absolutely fine. But let's see what we can do with battery power because this would be a very interesting prospect for a tablet. So this is an uninterruptible power supply from Sunfounder 
uh, you can use it to power your Pi, but also if you have uh, a power cut, it will still keep things going. And this is what it looks like without anything screwed into it. So it's got USB-C to charge it, and it's got USB-A to power other devices. Uh, and as you can see, it's got a couple of lithium ion batteries in it. Uh, these batteries I had to order separately from eBay. Uh, not the best name for a lithium battery, Ultra Fire, um, but they've been all right so far. So let's plug this in. So let's shut this down first and shut down. So the Sun Founder comes with a really nice short USB-C cable. So let's unplug that. So we're not plugged into the power at all now. Uh, if I plug it into this device, uh, so through the USB A connection, and it's just got an ordinary switch on it. So let's see if this can power the Pi and also power the screen as well. Yeah, that's working. So that could work as a tablet option. Uh, obviously what we'd need to do is, uh, if we unplug these two bits, use something connected to the Visa mounts on the back here. Uh, there's plenty of 3D print options on Thingiverse, such as this one for a Raspberry Pi 3, 2B and 1B. Uh, so this has got Visa mounts on the sides here. You can see there's loads of different variations on this. Some of them nice and slim as well. Just got to work out a way of putting the battery on there and some nice short cables. This is for a Pi Zero. Uh, and you can see various different other options for Pis to be able to fit on the back of a monitor. So here I've got my Pi Zero 2W plugged into HDMI. I've got a cable running from USB-C to the micro USB on the Pi Zero 2W. This is the one that supports data and then I'm powering it all from the Sun Founder uninterruptible power supply. So everything seems to be working fine, even the touchscreen control. Uh, I had a question on this about the touchscreen with Pi Zero with a different monitor. And uh, it's basically, this is the data connection that you need to use. So anything that's in this connection is only going to use power. It's the data one is this one here. And I had thought about another way of wiring this in a little bit differently. So if I shut this down, my thought was to use uh, a USB hub because I wasn't sure if the Pi Zero 2W was going to supply enough power to the monitor, but it turns out it does. So let's just switch that off. And this was with just an ordinary power bank that I've had for years. Uh, so I figured I'd plug it into this. That powers this USB hub. Uh, and then from this USB hub, I can plug in all sorts of things. So the monitor I can plug in separately using this USB-C to a adapter that's going to give it power uh, I've already got this plugged in so I'm going to need power on this and I thought I'd plug that into the USB hub as well which leaves me with a free data connection uh, I, there's obviously loads of ways you can do this but uh, I just thought it was another way of doing it I could plug my keyboard dongle into here using this micro USB to USB C USB C to USB A get it the right around then if I introduce my keyboard, I can see that the keyboard is working absolutely fine on this. Right, let's have a look at some of the specs on this monitor. So it's available on Amazon, and uh, as you can see here, the resolution is 1366 by 768, which works really well on a 12-inch screen. It looks nice and sharp. HDMI Type-C, USB-C, Visa mount, dual built-in speaker. It pretty much works with everything that works with HDMI. Uh, very, very good compatibility. I see down the bottom here, it's got a blue light filter, uh, flicker free. I have noticed it does look very smooth. It's a 60 hertz monitor as well. And if we have a look at some of the pictures, no splash and low blue. 10 point capacitive touchscreen and uh, it's very responsive as a touchscreen display. So here we can have a look at connectivity. So we've got the mini HDMI, couple of USB-C connections, dual speakers, so one on each side. And uh, we've also got some buttons here, so exit. This is a rocker switch, uh, so you can toggle through different settings, which I'll show in a minute, and also an option to plug in some headphones. Very, very portable. It, uh, it is really handy, as I say, and, and carrying around with a laptop, I think, is a particularly good way of using it. And I've just tried to use my Melee Mini PC with a power bank, but it looks like there's not enough power. You can see power is going from the power bank through the Mini PC into the monitor, but it's coming up with no signal and it doesn't let me turn it on. So I'm gonna plug the Melee PC into the mains and see if that works. So unplug this and plug in the standard USB-C adapter that comes with the Melee PC. Yeah, so we've got the uh, red light, which means that we can turn it on now. It's a shame I was thinking that this was gonna be able to power it, but it just doesn't have enough power. 
uh, to use this as a tablet. But I can use Windows 10 or 11 on the Pi and still use this, so I have another option. And let's try it on touch. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. And here I'm running dual screen mode from my Pi 4. So this is the second monitor. And if I start playing some video, and let's pop it on full screen. Not, not sure how well this will work because I'm running two versions of Chrome on this one Pi 4. Although the video playback seems to be okay. And if we go in close, we can see the controls here. So here we've got brightness control, contrast, black equalizer, and various different game modes on here, which you can flick through. RTS seems to be one of the brightest ones. And if I click on brightness, you can see that I can raise that all the way up. But I can also play around with contrast mode on there as well. And the button on the left hand side is exit. So this is like a back button really. So you can see I can go all the way out or all the way back in. Uh, and if I flick through, we've got color effect, information. There's a reset option on there as well. Ultra HDR mode, eye protection, 3D sound, anchor, all sorts of things on there. So I thought I'd show what was supplied, uh, but at the end of the video, just to do something a little different. Uh, so it comes with a USB-C adapter, which is a five volt, two amp. That's what powers it. I've got a little cloth to be able to clean it. I've got a contact card there if you need support. There is some instructions, although to be honest, it's super easy to use. Uh, I've got a stand. Uh, I've already got it on the stand, um, but uh, it actually comes with its own stand, uh, which is it similar to mine where you pinch? Oh, there's no, so there's no pinch. You just pop it to whatever size you want and pop the screen on it. Uh, and it's black, so it matches the screen a bit better than mine does, but that's also pretty nice and neat. I also have a USB-A to C cable a USB-C to C cable, which was the type I was using with my Samsung phone. And last, we have a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. So thanks very much to Ymaxit for sending me this display. I really like it. It is super light. Uh, the picture quality is decent. It's touchscreen. It's quite a decent price, I think, for what it is. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be using it in another video. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.